There's plenty of things that make Ed Oliver such a big prospect coming into this draft, but instead of just talking about them, let's just get into showing you them. Like on this one, for example, he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the center, which is always a good situation if you're an interior lineman if you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup against the center. You always love that. So basically the way this is going to start off is he's going to put his right arm right there, right in that center's left side of his body. That's going to be the principal point of contact, and as we all know, low man always wins, and if Ed Oliver can get low enough, this means that he could push that center pretty far back. That's what he was able to do, and he basically just moved that line of scrimmage back a yard. That's what that one move just did. Then what he can do is put his left arm right there on that center's right side of his body, and sort of push him down to the bottom half of the screen. As we already saw with Ed Oliver's first initial jump by being able to push the center a yard back, he clearly is very strong, so this definitely is the type of move he can pull off. He's able to twist over and get the tackle out of the way, and then twist back over and get to the running back for a stop. This is clearly just a fantastic play for several reasons. First off, just the strength, but also that's not easy to get over to the halfback after knocking that center out of the way. I mean, you have to push the center one way and then get your hands all the way over in the opposite direction and have enough force to then be able to tackle the halfback. That kind of is his go-to move when he is going one-on-one -on -one against the center, and this play will be another example of it. What you see on the screen is a blocking concept, and also if you take a look at that double team that's on the right side of the screen, eventually that right guard is going to move to block the linebackers, so in theory this should mean that both the linebackers and everyone on the line should be accounted for. It's a home run type play, but of course the problem is the fact that now you have a center going up one-on-one -on -one against Ed Oliver, which as I've just shown is definitely not great. But this center is actually going to start things off pretty decently well. If you notice, his hand is actually to the outside of Oliver's hand right there. That's good hand placement because it makes it very difficult for Oliver to get around you in this situation. But watch what Oliver's going to do here. First, he kind of yanks his left arm out of the way, and now you're probably thinking, okay, that's kind of silly, right? You only have one arm against the center, which you would think is not a very good situation. However, Oliver is so strong that he's still going to try to push him to that side of the screen. Now, this is a very difficult thing to pull off, but one thing he has going for him is look at his feet. I mean, this really is like throwing a hook in boxing. You're using your hips to move him, not using your arms. As anyone who's ever boxed before could tell you, really the power comes from your legs when you're punching, not from your arms. And it's kind of a similar situation here, where obviously he's not punching, but he still is using his upper body to try to force someone out of the way, so it's a similar effect. And the easiest way to do that is by relying on your lower body, more specifically by relying on good footwork. With that wide stance, and with the fact that his right knee is nearly on the ground, it's going to allow him to get a ton of power. He's easily able to push the center away, really the center doesn't have a chance there, and he's able to get over to the halfback. That's something you really love to see, is a guy with a lot of power, especially in the interior line. This next play is another pretty interesting one, there's going to be two tight ends who each have blocks right over there, one-on-one -on -one blocks on the edge, and then going one further in, their right tackle will go out to block that linebacker right there. Nothing too crazy at this point, but it's going to get a little bit unique here. If you take a look, the center and left tackle are both going to double team that one guy right there. This now means that the left guard can actually pull over there and get a better angle to block that interior lineman. But the problem with all this fancy stuff is that no matter what you do, if you pull all these guys over, someone is going to have to have a bad block. And in this situation, it's going to be the right guard going up against Ed Oliver. Part of this is because the right guard sort of has to move over, and when you have a powerful guy like Oliver, when he does move over, Oliver can really push him back. He has that power, and once again, if you notice, his right hand is right there on the left side of that guard's body. That's what allows him to get that power, is all the power is going straight into his body there. Because the left side of Oliver's body is just naturally going to end up being on that guard, it's really important to get your right hand in proper hand placement. From there, the guard is basically going to have no choice but to try to push Oliver out of the way, but he isn't able to do so, and Oliver basically runs straight into the running back. Really, the fact of the matter is, it's kind of head-scratching as to why anyone would think they can get away with these types of plays. I know it's college where you see a lot more of those unique type blocks, but the fact of the matter is, you have to pay Ed Oliver at least enough attention. Maybe you can get away with one-on-one -on -one blocks here and there, but you really can't get away with having a guard have to move over to then get a one-on-one -on -one block, or just having a center one-on-one -on -one block him. I get that you can't double-team him every play, but you have to pay him that extra attention and make sure that you're not going to be blocking him weak in any way, because if you do, he can absolutely make you pay, and this one will be another example, as he is in, once again, a one-on-one -on -one block against the center. Once again, he does his favorite move of initiating the contact and trying to push that guy farther back. It's totally a good move, as I've shown before, however, this time it's not going to really work out as well. One problem Oliver has in this one is that his hand is to the inside instead of the outside, which should make things a little bit more difficult in terms of trying to get around the center. Now, the key thing here is this is going to be a run basically right there, meaning that Oliver is going to be the key guy on this play. It's going to be up to him to try to make a tackle and take a look at how he's going to go about doing that. Basically, he's going to take his right arm and move it over to center's right arm. Now, even though his left arm was to the inside, because of this, now he's still able to, going to be able to get around that center. He closes up that hole mightily and it leads to a tackle. 
for the life of me, I don't know why so many teams consistently tried to have one-on-one -on -one blocks against the center with Ed Oliver, but they really did, and it really wasn't smart. Here's another example. That's where Oliver is on the screen, and it's a one-on-one -on -one block against the center, and take a look at what is going to happen here. This is actually kind of the situation I've showed you before. However, it's a better angle, so that's why I'm including it in this video. But there's also another reason why I'm bringing this up, and if you notice, it's actually going to be his left hand as the key point of contact on this one. Sometimes guys can basically only push off with their right hand if they're right-handed, or their left hand if they're left-handed, but Oliver definitely can push off with either hand hand. Like as of right now, because of that, he's able to push and look at that center right now. His body is completely turned through the top half of the screen. I mean, look at the center's left foot. I mean, it's completely off the ground right now. This is just not what you want to have happen if you're a center. Oliver can then quickly get through and create some sort of contact with the quarterback and disrupt the play a little bit. While those plays are all great, basically I could show him being able to own one-on-one -on -one matchups against centers all day. I mean, that's not too impressive. But like, let's take a look at some more unique plays. Like on this one, basically Oliver is expecting to be going up against that guard right there. So what he's going to do is basically try to put his right arm right there and kind of quickly get past that guard. That's the whole goal on this play. But there's one problem, and it's that the guard isn't blocking at Oliver at all. Instead, it's actually going to be the tackle. Of course, the problem is the tackle did have to move farther over to try to get to Oliver, so because Oliver is so quick, now he doesn't have the best hand placement. This isn't the way you'd want to block a guy straight up, although it is worth mentioning that it is kind of the way you can block someone just out of the play. I mean, this is actually a play action where the quarterback is going to cut back to the right side of the screen, so all that tackle has to do, really, is just push Oliver as far to the left side of the screen as possible. And since it is a play action in the area, Oliver will probably creep to that side of the screen anyways, meaning that it should be pretty simple. But if you notice, what Oliver is going to do is basically get his left arm and kind of push against the tackle right there. He kind of has to use the back of his left arm, but it's still going to do the same effect, because now it's going to allow him to free up and get around right over there. It allows him to get his arm free, and now if you're a tackle, you're kind of just screwed at this point. If you keep hanging on, well then it's just going to be holding and it'll be a penalty. However, you can't really block him either, so this now allows Oliver to completely get free and he's able to disrupt the play and force the quarterback to make a throw quickly. If you take a look at this one, it is going to be a 1-1 matchup. However, instead of a center, it's going to be a guard this time. So typically if you're a guard, where do you want to put your hand? You want to put your hand right there, right on that right shoulder pad. If he were to get his left hand on Oliver's shoulder pad, this would make things a lot easier and make it a lot easier to control him. But take a look at what Oliver's going to do to combat that. He basically puts his right arm underneath the guard's left arm. The purpose of this is now the guard's left hand is basically over Oliver and he can't get it on that shoulder pad like he would like to. What the guard's going to try to do now is basically just push Oliver to the bottom half of the screen, basically trying to create a gap so he's just going to try to get Oliver out of the way. Yes, he didn't get great hand placement, but it still is okay if he can get one solid push and get Oliver out of that situation. But Oliver is so strong that he is able to push that guard over and make a much smaller gap than typically you would like. The Tulsa halfback even runs into that guard, which shows how narrow of a gap it really was. It was a great mixture of having good hands and being very strong. One thing worth mentioning when you are talking about a guy who could potentially be a top 5 overall pick is how can they do against double teams. That was kind of one of my nitpicks with Quinn and Williams, the fact that he is a beast against 1-on-1 -on -one blocking, but however when it's 2-on-1 -on -one, he struggles a bit. But Oliver is actually very good in 2-on-1 -on blocks. If you take a look at this one, that's where he is on the screen, and he is going to get double teamed with a center and right guard. So what one thing Oliver is going to do is put his right arm on the center's left side of his body. This is actually very smart, because while there still is two guys who are going to be blocking him, only one of them is going to be in great position to make a block because he's going straight to the center. It still isn't quite a 1-on-1 -on -one block, but he is pretty much making it a 1-on-1 -on -one block by basically running straight into the center. Now, of course, the dilemma with that is now you're basically giving up hand placement. You're basically saying, here, you can have good hand placement in exchange for me turning it into close to a 1-on-1 -on -one block. But because he is so strong, even with poor hand placement, he can push that center and guard way farther back. He's not the one who makes the tackle or anything, but he definitely helps contribute. This play ended up being a sack, and part of the reason for that was because there's no way you can step up in the pocket on a play like that. When they call interior linemen disruptors, well this is kind of why, because of plays like this. He also did this move a couple times against the double team, which I think is really brilliant. If you take a look at what's going to happen here, there is a left tackle and guard double teaming him on this one. Basically the first thing he's going to do right now is put his right arm right there, right onto that left tackle's right side of his body. Then he's basically going to do the same thing on the other side of his body with his left hand to the guard who's on his left. This is going to kind of allow him to squeeze through both of them. It's really a tremendous play, it's kind of like what's that competition in American Ninja Warrior, like the spider jump? where you have to like jump up and then catch yourself on a wall. It's kind of like that. It takes a lot of strength, but Ed Oliver definitely has a lot of strength, as I've mentioned 98 times in this video. One more fun one, this is definitely a highlight reel type play. Take a look what Oliver is going to do here. First things first, that tackle is actually not going to be blocking Oliver at all. He's going to be moving up to block a linebacker. 
but Oliver, clearly not aware that's the play, is still going to go up and make contact with the tackle, and it actually kind of makes some sense. I mean, he doesn't know exactly what the tackle is going to do, but he has to have a feeling that the tackle is moving up, he's going to block somebody. Unless he just got bored and just running downfield for fun, the chances are this is part of the play design. So he slows the tackle down, but now there's another player who's getting over who's actually assigned to be blocking Oliver. But as you see here, what's going to end up happening is it's kind of sloppy play right now. And not sloppy because it's bad, just sloppy because that's football. That's what happens sometimes, is plays don't exactly work out the way you wanted them to on paper. There is some contact, but it's not really the way you'd want to block Oliver, and now there's a halfback going to the bottom half of the screen. That being said, due to all the contact Oliver had already had to deal with, it should still be okay. I mean, the halfback is running away from him, and Oliver shouldn't really be able to get into this play. But because he is so athletic and has such great footwork, he's still going to be able to lunge over and make a tackle. He really is a tremendous player, and while he does play a lot on the interior line, he can also play edge, and I actually think he'd be very good as a 3-4 defensive end. That's part of why in my mock draft, I had Tampa Bay selecting him, because I think that would make a lot of sense, because he could fit in that system very well in a Todd Bowles type system. I also think that versatility really just helps because no matter what system he's in, he can be valuable. It's always tough to tell with rookies coming out about how good or bad they're going to be, but he definitely seems to be as close to a sure thing as you can get.